Hi, it's Andy again. I have another Android tutorial for you today. This one we're going back to parse and we're going to create a login app. So the whole purpose of this app is that we're going to be able to manage users, uh, create uh, a sign up and have uh, the ability for users to log in again if they already have signed up for the app. So the general layout of this is going to be we're going to have the option to log in or sign up. So click on the login and it'll pull up you know just the username and password and then to sign up it'll have you know the ability to, to set up a username password verify that the password actually matches and then once we click sign up we'll register that user and log them into the app now um, for this tutorial we'll just create a, a bogus user we'll say X, Y, Z user with a password of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then when we, once we sign in, it'll take us to our actual activity. Now, a cool thing about this is that it keeps your um, sign in. So, say we close the app and relaunch it, you're still logged in. Um, now I built in a little log out button so that we can test this over and over again. So let's try the login since we now have signed up. Let's do it's XYZ user. Two, three, four, seven, eight. So once we sign in, there you go. And let's try creating a fake uh, a, a, a wrong password so we'll log in XYZ user and one two two three four five six seven eight so we added two twos they'll say invalid login credentials so it's actually checking the server to see if the username and password matches um, okay so now that you've seen how the app looks, let's talk about how to create it. So first thing you need to do is import your parse SDK into your project and reference it as a library. So see what that looks like. Um, it's just this section down here. Uh, easy way to do it is to just drag and drop the jar file and then right click on it and down it's not going to show up because we've already added it as a library but it'll have a little option down here on the bottom to say add as library and once you do that you're you're good to go for the parse um, SDK being set up for your app now the next thing you need to do is initialize your app so in order to do that create a, um, a class called whatever you want it to be but it needs to extend application okay so um, all we need to do is to register the, our app ID and our client ID, which you get through um, the Parse website for your app that you've already set up. Um, you just need to call onCreate method for application, and then parse.initialize, get the context, which is this, um, your app ID, and then your client ID. And that's it. You're all set. Uh, next thing you need to do for this is now we're going to talk about how uh, our layout is going to look up. We need our main view, which is going to be the option to sign up or log in. So that's going to be our two buttons. We need to have a sign up feature. So that's going to have your username, password one, password two, the ability to check to see if password one and password two match and that they're not. Uh, blank fields because those are going to be required fields um, and then the last thing we need to do is have a login activity so um, so let's say users already set up all we need is just a username password and a button to submit and um, this dispatch activity is just a nice little activity that checks to see if a user is here it's really quick to see if a user is logged in and if they are we're just going to start their main activity that we we have set up and if not we're going to set up the the sign up or login activity so the user can either sign up or log in um, quick note 
This will be actually your uh, your launcher activity. So if you go into your man manifest, um, this intent filter here to launch it, we're going to be saying we want to launch the dispatch activity instead of your uh, regular main activity. Otherwise, it'll just skip all of these activities here that we've just created. Now to use the the application cla um, application class, you need to specify it in your manifest just like an activity. But um, in your right here in your application, you just add another line called Android name, and then the name of the file that you um, name of the class that you named it, and then you're set up to go. You're done. Uh, also. Uh, real quick, make sure if you're testing it on an actual device, you need these two enabled. Uh, the emulator lets you do this by default without actually setting this up. Um, I don't know why they let you do that, but it's bad practice, so you don't want to release an app that doesn't have access to the internet. So make sure you add these two uh, permissions in so that you can uh, actually you know, call the server and log somebody in or register somebody. Okay. So let's talk about our, uh, real quick, our sign up and login activity. This is also pretty easy. We just have two buttons, okay? And then we're setting uh, an on-click listener for each button and intents for each one. So if they, the user selects to log in, we are going to start a login activity. If they choose that they want to sign up, we're just gonna start the sign up activity. Pretty simple. So let's talk about um, the sign up activity since that's going to be where some where the user starts up for the first time. So this is going to be the lengthy activity, um, but fortunately it's pretty easy. So we have our three views, which are the um, uh, username, password one, and password two. So then we register these, we set them up, and then uh, the next thing we need to do is uh, use our bu our button. So this is going to be our login button that we're setting an on-click listener to. And uh, before we can call the server and do all the stuff for register a user, we need to do some checks. So that's all this is doing real quick. Uh, we're setting a boolean, which is a true or false statement, to false for the moment. Uh, we're but we need to check to to see. Um, if any of the fields are empty. So this is going to check to see if the username field is empty, if the password name or the password name is empty. Because um, if either one of these is empty, we need to alert the user. So there's a method here is empty. And all it does is it checks to see if the edit text that we have, it checks to see if the, the, the string is uh, greater than zero. Because if it's greater than zero, it means it's not empty. So we can return um, uh, false uh, here. So what we want to know is if it's false. So okay. So is empty. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Here we go. This so is it's empty. Okay, sorry. Yeah, if it's empty, it'll return true because we want we're asking if this actual field is empty. So if it's not true, it's gonna just skip over this whole part. But if it is empty, we need to you know alert the user that something's wrong and exactly what they're what they've done. So these two. Uh, methods here are all they're doing is uh, checking to see if the username or password are empty and if they are they're just popping up a toast the toast doesn't get called later because what this is actually doing is building it all up into one message and displaying it as a toast message with everything that's wrong so it allows you to catch multiple issues okay the next thing we need to do is to make sure that password the two password fields that we're confirming actually match and it, the nice thing is that we're doing all of this on the device, real simple with a few lines of code, uh, instead of having to check the server to make sure all this stuff is good, because you know that would take actually a lot longer than doing something natively. Uh, so 
there's this method is matching and that's all it is is going to do is compare the two strings from password and then the password to or the again the conf confirmation password field so that's what this method uh, does is is matching um, all it does is it checks to see if the text inside uh, the first field is equal to the text inside the second field. Now you can convert these into strings if you want to and pass them on that way. It doesn't really matter which method you choose. Um, you're going to get the same result. So if they match, it'll return true. If not, it'll return false. So uh, this little exclamation point here is like if it's not matching. So if it's returning a false value, we need to register an error and alert the user what the error is. So this is going to um, alert the user that they need to enter the same password. Um, so as you can see up here, if their username was blank, it says enter a username. Uh, if their password was blank, it says enter a password. OK. so. Um, and then here's where we're actually displaying the toast. So if there is an error, we're alerting the, the user that there's an error and we're also not going to continue. So this calling return here totally ignores everything after this point because this is when we're going to be calling um, the server and registering a, a user. So uh, what this is, is this is a, a dialog box. So I don't know if you saw it, but when we signed up the user there's a little box that came up with a little spinning wheel to show that you know we're doing something so we need to start the the progress dialog and eventually we're going to tell it to go away and that's once we're done checking the server and doing everything so uh, once we've gotten to this we know that the person's username is valid and their passwords are matching so we need to get those those strings and we're going to register it to a parse user so here we go parse user is a new user and we're setting their username and their password okay so now we need to sign them up and the nice thing is that this is all done in the background so uh, this you know it doesn't tie up your your UI thread so it'll actually be a nice smooth um, user interface by doing this instead of taking up the your main threads resources to do computations instead of actually displaying buttons and screens and all that wonderful stuff that actually makes a smooth app so um, that's what this sign up in background you want to call this method you don't ever want to do something in the foreground for this especially when you're making network calls because um, that's something that will definitely uh, lag your UI so once we've signed them up, we need to dismiss the, um, the dialogue. And then we need to check to see if there's an error. So that's what this E is. This E um, is an error, parse exception E, which is an error or exception. If there is no error, good. We've signed up everybody, and we're good to go. Or, um, oh, sorry. If it doesn't equal no, means we have an error. We need to display what the error is. If it does equal no, means there's no error. We're good to go. We need to then relaunch the dispatch activity, which will then forward us onto the main activity because now we have somebody that's logged in. And uh, these two intent flags here will just clear out basically the uh, whatever is going on in the background. So uh, we're not tying up any more resources, which is good. You want to call these. Okay, so that's a brief uh, sum up of a sign up activity. Next thing we need to do is, okay, let's say the person has signed up for your app, they got a new phone, they're re-downloading your app, they need to sign in. So let's do a sign in or login. So it's very similar to uh, the sign up except you only have one password field. We don't need to compare them. We just need to check to see if they're empty. So. Uh, so here's our two edit text fields. Here's our um, on-click listener for our button. And um, so we're checking again to see if there's any kind of error. We're checking to see if our, our fields are empty. And if they are, we're going to display an error message. But if they're not, we're going to display that same dialog. And then um, 
now we're going to call a, a method called parse user login background. So it's going to take the username and the password, send it up to the cloud, and uh, check to see if they match what what parses servers are saying is a is a good valid combination between the two. Uh, again, if you have an error, you're gonna want to display the error to the user saying, "Oh, they don't match" or whatever. Uh, and if they do, all we're gonna do is the same thing again. We're gonna call the dispatch activity, which is then gonna pass us on to our regular main activity, um, and then you know clear out the the memory here. And then uh, this is exactly the same method that's in um, in the sign up or login activity. If you wanna make this public, you can call it from wherever and only do it once. <laughs> so uh, this is just a quick, for viewing purposes, how to do this. And um, so for this, I have only four layouts. One of them is the typical hello world, the one that starts up when you create a new app. Um, the next one is our um, login activity, our sign in activity, and then our original sign up or login activity, which is just the two buttons. Uh, this is this example was uh, taken from the any wall app from Parse. So uh, I just stripped out the parts that made sense for a login app, and um, I copied and pasted that and decided to um, explain it. So uh, mad props to Parse for actually creating a a login app that works that we can actually view and see and I'll post the the source for that uh, that's the source here on github but now let's actually check to see okay now I have a user registered let's go view them now you're not gonna see any uh, users here because I haven't refreshed the data so once we refresh our data we'll see that we have XYZ user um, it gives them an object ID which we'll, we we won't need but that's you know, a unique identifier for Parsis servers. And uh, lovely thing is you will not be able to see their password. That's awesome. <laughs> um, you don't have to worry about uh, the security. It's all handled by Parse. Um, and then uh, you can also see installations. So this app has been installed only on one, one device and that is um, this emulator right here. So we haven't run this anywhere else. Uh, but you can see that your device gives them a token um, to register uh, your app to, uh, to parse. Now, if you wanna get your app ID and your client ID, it's over here in settings. I have it hidden for a reason because uh, if I publish it, then you're gonna be making your apps on my sample uh, parse app and uh, it could use up my data and stuff like that, which I wanna keep for another app that I'm making. So um, another thing is we can also delete users from here. So let's say somebody emails you and says, you know, your app is terrible. I want to, I don't want to be associated with this anymore or whatever. You can just click this, hit more, um, delete all rows. And then to confirm it, we want to type in the user. So now we hit OK. Now when we try to run this app and try to log in, so it was XYZ user with a password of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When we try to log in, invalid login credentials. We've now essentially signed somebody out of the app for them, which is pretty cool. Now let's say they were logged in, the next time they launch the app, it'll probably check and make sure that that's a valid token. And when it sees that it's not, it'll kick them off. So um, hope you like this tutorial and let me know if you have any questions. I will be posting the source code with my app ID and client ID um, taken out. And uh, also I'll link the, the AnyWall parse um, GitHub so that you can see, you know, the styling and the layouts and stuff that I just basically copied and pasted. So um, big props to Parse for actually giving a good Android tutorial or source that you can actually use. So um, again, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a good day.